calls to decarbonize our economies grow louder, policymakers are turning to nuclear energy and its many advantages. It has been decades since we've seen this kind of political will to support the nuclear energy industry. There are over 400 nuclear reactors operating worldwide, with 60 under construction and an additional 110 in the planning phase. Once brought online, these new reactors will further increase demand for uranium. As forecasts suggest a much larger role for nuclear power, the question remains, where will all the uranium come from to power these reactors? We think that uranium is not just needed, but also a good place to be in the mining sector. And we wanted to find a advanced project that was unique to the market. Panther Minerals Inc. is a client and sponsor of Pinnacle Digest, whose parent company owns shares of Panther Minerals Inc. Please read the full disclosure at the end of this video. Over the past three years, one metal has outperformed gold, silver, copper, and nearly all other commodities we follow. From about $32 per pound in spring of 2021 to around $90 per pound in May of 2024, uranium has been on an epic rally. This surge has been fueled by a unique blend of energy demands, policy, and geopolitical shifts. According to the Nuclear Energy Institute, just one uranium fuel pellet creates as much energy as one ton of coal, 149 gallons of oil, or 17,000 cubic feet of natural gas. Unlike wind and solar, which are intermittent, nuclear energy provides a reliable, baseload power source. Crucially, nuclear energy is cleaner than fossil fuels, which is why more than 20 countries launched the declaration to triple nuclear capacity by 2050 at the historic 2023 UN Climate Change Conference. The United States, Canada, France, Japan, and the United Kingdom plan to invest 4.2 billion to ensure a secure nuclear energy supply chain. Additionally, in March in Brussels, there was the first global nuclear summit at the head of state and government level. Leaders gathered to highlight the role of nuclear energy in reducing the use of fossil fuel, enhancing energy security, and boosting economic development. With global energy demand set to increase steadily over the next decade, and a strong global desire to clean up our energy sources, nuclear energy stands at the forefront. Nuclear energy operates via fission, splitting uranium atoms to generate energy. The resulting heat drives turbines for electricity production without emitting harmful byproducts present in fossil fuels. Billionaire tech visionary Sam Altman, the co-founder and CEO of OpenAI, took a nuclear fission company, Oklo, public earlier this year. According to CNBC, Altman said that he sees nuclear energy as one of the best ways to solve the problem of growing demand for AI and the energy that powers the technology without relying on fossil fuels. It's also worth noting that Bill Gates founded TerraPower many years ago to develop advanced nuclear energy technology to meet growing electricity needs, mitigate climate change, and lift billions out of poverty. Currently, nuclear power provides about 10% of the world's electricity. This stands in stark contrast to coal and natural gas, which account for roughly 36% and 23% respectively. According to Visual Capitalist, the U.S. sources only 27% of its enriched uranium domestically. The rest is imported. Historically, Russia has been the largest international supplier, providing 24% of U.S. imports, double the next closest single supplier. But there's a problem with that. In December, the U.S. House of Representatives passed a bill banning Russian uranium imports. The U.S. Senate followed suit on May 1st. Although the act comes with the possibility for exemptions in some narrow cases, Secretary of Energy Jennifer Granholm emphasized that the U.S. will not rely on Russian imports for its clean energy future. As import costs soared recently, U.S. miners ramped up uranium production, achieving the highest first quarter production since 2018. But this will not come close to replacing the nation's historic dependence on Russian uranium. So to help solidify its uranium supply security, in addition to relying on other nations, America must grow its domestic resources. This will rely on several factors, including funding from institutions and investors, and on the expertise of miners, geologists, and explorers. A supportive macro environment, like the one we are currently in for nuclear energy, and therefore uranium, paves the way for explorers to raise the necessary risk capital in search for the next uranium property of scale. Hundreds of millions of dollars have flowed into the uranium space over the last year or so, and one early stage explorer, known as Panther Minerals, recently secured roughly $2 million via equity offerings, which will allow the junior to fund its initial exploration on the Boulder Creek uranium property, located in Alaska on the Seward Peninsula. 
Discovered in 1977 by airborne radiometric data by Chevron, Boulder Creek is the most northerly known sandstone type uranium property in the world. Today, the company's CEO, Rob Birmingham, will join me to learn more about Panther Minerals' strategic plans in Alaska and what it aims to achieve. So let's go chat with Rob and find out more about Panther Minerals. Rob, it's great to be with you. Let's jump right into it. Finding an economic deposit is hard work. It takes luck, a ton of time, and a lot of money. What makes you think there's gonna be enough time in this uranium cycle for Panther Minerals to capitalize? I think the, the need of electricity is, is very prevalent worldwide right now. I think that there's not enough measures to meet the benchmarks that are needed for countries and really the world. And I think uranium is a solution to a lot of these problems. So I think that the cycle is gonna sustain and, and be long-term. Currently 60 nuclear reactors are being built worldwide. Over 110 are planned, which really goes to show the thought of all the leading countries in the world. Now, more specifically how you're playing the space, there's easier ways to make a living than building out an exploration company, which you're doing. Why uranium? Why now? Why Alaska? Personally, I have 15 plus years experience in the mining space. Myself and my team really wanted to pursue uranium. We think that uranium is not just needed, but also a good place to be in the mining sector. And we wanted to find a project that had a resource on it and that was unique to the market. And really this project met all those benchmarks. So the Boulder Creek deposit, which is in Alaska, has a non-compliant resource of a million pounds at 0.27% and is in a very mining friendly jurisdiction. Let's talk about that project. What makes Boulder Creek perspective in your opinion? So Boulder Creek itself, the deposit has a historical resource of a million pounds at 0.27% U308. There's been fairly substantial drilling on it. There's been over 74 holes in the entirety of the property. But outside of that, there's the fireweed portion of the project, which is very speculative, which came back with very strong sample results. With our Boulder Creek portion and the fireweed portion of our project, it really has something that's proven and something that's prospective but exciting. So I think the two of them tied in together will mean an active summer for us, but also a lot of possibilities for in the future. You mentioned the anomaly at Fireweed being actually larger than Boulder Creek. Can you talk about kind of the early days, the discovery of that prospect and you know how that all came about? So Triax and Fullmetal Minerals in 2006 initiated a survey and found huge anomalies in that portion of the property, which led them to initiate a sample program, which came back with really strong readings up to 0.82% U308, which is really strong. So. That is an area that we really want to explore. They did do a small drill program, which we're currently looking to analyze the data on that, but we're excited about it. The anomaly is huge and uh, it's definitely worth pursuing. So as the company looks at these two assets, they're on the same contiguous block, but as the company looks at these two assets, how would you define each of them? So the Boulder Creek, deposit is known like there's been substantial work done on it there's a historic non-compliant resource on it uh, we know what we have there the blue sky for us is really the fireweed portion of the project and in that portion of the project there's a lot of opportunity for us to be active on there the anomaly is massive outside of that some of the samples that came back are really strong as well so we're excited to work both but uh, there's definitely more blue sky on the fireweed side so the company just raised two million bucks investors these days are a fickle bunch they're going to want news flow what do the next three to six months look like in terms of proving this up? Like, what are the first steps? Yeah, yeah, we completed our financing uh, recently, $2 million. We're allotting a lot of that to working on the project. And our goal is to get up there and drill this summer. We have the process started for drill permits. Outside of that, we're planning to be on the ground in July. And that'll include doing some sampling, um, confirming the model on the property, and delineating some uh, targets on the property as well. So. We're going to be active starting July and we're hoping to get our drill permits back soon, which in turn will allow us to plan uh, exactly where we're going to drill and exactly when. Now, drilling a few holes is one thing. In terms of turning this resource into a compliant one, do you have any idea how much time and money that's going to take? It's a complicated answer. There's a lot of data we have to go through and, and luckily for us, the historical individuals who work the property and companies that work the property have kept a lot of the data and it's available to us. So our head geologist was a director of Triax Minerals. He knows intimately the property and where the core is, which is actually located just off the airstrip on our property. So we have access to the core, which we can analyze. We have access to the core from Houston Oil Minerals, who had the property in the late 70s and early 80s in Anchorage. So the first step will be to review that. And the next step will be to start doing infill drilling, proving out what we think is there and, and really expanding it. So it's going to be a gradual thing, but we're excited to get there. With respect to infrastructure, what kind of access do you guys have to the properties? Fly-in only, right? 
It's flying only. Triarch and Fort Metal Minerals expanded an airstrip which was already on site previous. So it's plain access, there's no road access, but on site to the Boulder Creek portion of the project which we're gonna be working on, uh, there's ATV trails which need to be slightly rebuilt, but we have quick access to the uh, property that we're gonna wanna do, do our work on. And also there, there's readily available water on site, which, which can be a concern for a lot of mining companies, but not for us. And what does the season look like? You're talking about boots on the ground in July. How long can you work in this part of Alaska? So the season starts late June, early July, contingent on snowmelt, and then it can last into October. And you know the plus side of working in Alaska is there's a lot of sunlight. So that basically means you can drill almost day round. So 24 hours you can be on the project doing work. So that really allows you to maximize your time and limit your expenditures as, as opposed to a longer season. So it's June, 2024. There's three, four months left in the season. What are the three big things the company is hoping to achieve? Yeah. The first thing I think is already underway. We've applied for our drill permits, which we want to drill this, this summer. We're really excited about doing that. We're delineating targets currently. Uh, we're going to press that forward. Our second thing that you, you can look at uh, as far as Panther progressing forward this summer is we want to get boots on the ground. We want to start sampling the project, delineating targets, and proving out the model on the property. And I think we're going to be able to do that come mid-July to late July. Our third step will be to access the fire read portion of the project where we're gonna also sample and uh, do a radiometric survey which will prove out the model that we think is there and then move into drilling uh, in late August, early September. Boulder Creek or fire weed as well? Boulder Creek will be the focus as far as drilling. We know what we have there. We want to prove it out, prove out the model. Fireweed, we will definitely initiate a sample program and we're hoping later in the summer to dictate a drill program too. What are some of the risks that keep you up at night when you think about this project, this sector? What are you worried about? Well, there's, there's nothing specific that jumps out at me out of the gate. One thing that we've been really quick to stay ahead of is the fact that the season's short. So we acquired the project two months ago. We've needed to be really quick on our feet as far as planning, and that's what we're doing right now. So in knowing that we have a shortened season, we're going to be really quick to be on the property and do work to really provide value for ourselves and, and for our shareholders. Let's talk cap table for a moment. You guys closed a $0.05 cent financing in Q1. You recently closed a $0.20 cent financing in May of 2024. What does the cap table look like currently? Yeah, we closed a $2 million financing at 20 cents, which was closed uh, about two weeks ago. Our cap table, we have about 30 million shares outstanding, fully diluted, it's about 42 million. Our market cap is sitting about 14 million right now. Obviously you've taken to the Boulder Creek project. As you look out, you know, not just months, but years into the future, what is your ultimate goal with the project? I think out of the gate, we really wanna make the Boulder Creek portion of the project compliant. We wanna expand that resource so we can see whether or not it's economic and we think you know, that there's a good chance that it will be. Outside of that, um, we wanna explore other areas in the property and really see how much uranium we potentially have because we wanna be potentially a, a supplying factor to the domestic needs of uranium in the US. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. As we've explored, the resurgence of nuclear energy is not just a fleeting trend, but a pivotal shift in our global energy landscape. And with dozens of nuclear reactors under construction worldwide, part of the quest for net zero emissions relies on safely securing more uranium. This has opened the door to capital for producers, developers, and explorers within the uranium space. While making a uranium discovery of size and economic grade is no easy task, that's the overarching goal for Panther Minerals. Despite limited exploration activity over the past decade, by reevaluating geological data and utilizing modern exploration techniques, the company believes there is significant potential at the Boulder Creek project.